are trying to solve a technical problem, actually the same city is still in the lands of our attention. We will be speaking about Odessa. We would like to speak about multicultural heritage of Odessa, but we are forced to speak about multicultural heritage of Odessa at risk. So I will start this presentation. I'm here with two uh, professors from the Odessa State Academy of Engineering and Architecture, and I was also a student there. So I'm very thankful uh, to them and to the Fondazione Romana del Bianco for the possibility to present here. So I will start and then I will give the word to my professors. So the term, the word peace in Cyrillic had two letter styles in the past and there were two meanings. One word people and the other one, the peace, the antonym to the world war. This kind of peaceful world in Odessa city since its foundation was created by people of different nationalities. This city, the city of Odessa, is characterized by multicultural heritage that has been passing through many risks in the 20th, 21st centuries, but has always resisted in the name of unity and peace. Since 2022, we, the Odessa residents, we are so often asked, is your city Russian or Ukrainian? What language do you speak? The answer is that Odessa is different. Odessa is multicultural. And if you look back, in 1833, Johann Georg Kohl, who visited Odessa, was witnessing something like that. In the streets of Odessa, one hears Russian, English, Italian, German, Tatar, Polish. I will not read the whole list, you can see it here. And we know that Italian was among the most spoken languages in Odessa in that period. Odessa City Port Master Plan is a brilliant embodiment of Vitruvius' series of beauty. So it's also created according to the national, uh, to their ancient canons of beauty. We know that the Italian heritage in Odessa is very rich. It's known for numerous contributions by Italian architects, like the well-known Francesco Boffo that designed more than 30 buildings in the Odessa city center like Ivano dell'Acqua, the Napolitan born, or Giorgio Torricelli from Lugano, from the Italian Switzerland. We, know, we all know this symbol of Odessa, the Potonkin stairs, or originally Primorsky stairs. It was designed by Italian architect Francesco Boffon. The central street of Odessa, so when you go there for sure you will walk through, it's Deribasovskaya Street. It is named after Giuseppe or José Deribas, napolitan born military officer. Last thing, if you hear the song O Soli Mio, the world famous Italian song, it was actually composed in Odessa and it is believed that it was not inspired by sunset in Naples, but by the sunrise in Odessa. Okay. Another very strict connection of Odessa culture is to the Greek one. It was exactly in Odessa that in 1814, Philiki Eleteria was founded. This was a secret society of Greeks that were planning the Greek Revolution. Exactly, the one which was aimed to throw over the Ottoman rule and to deliberate the whole Greece. One of the most memorable measures of Odessa was Greek. He was of Greek origin. His name is Georgos Maraslis. And imagine that Filiki Eleteria nowadays is a um, center of Hellenic culture in Odessa. It is located more or less 300 meters away from the main square, which is called Greek Square. It's called like this because many Greeks were living in that area. 
not only Italian, not only Greek. So we know we, there are a lot of examples of German per heritage pearls, of you know French heritage. The first measure of Odessa was uh, French. I'm not very capable of reading French. However, it's Duke de Richelieu who created the Porto Franco area in Odessa. We also have the pearl of the city, which is the o Opera and Ballet Theater, which was designed by Viennese architects. So Odessa heritage is not only Odessa, it's the world in this city. This unity of different nationalities created really matrix of opportunities, multinationality, intelligence, cosmopolitanism, kindness, this special humor that our colleagues were, that the students were speaking just a short while ago, they all determined the originality of Odessa's mentality in multicultural heritage richness. So, but of course, this multicultural heritage is part of the heritage of the city, which is now at risk. So what we will be speaking now about are the risks that the heritage passed through and that is still going to pass. So we will be speaking about the First and the Second World War. We will show some destructions driven by political, social, and religious ch uh, changes, show some examples of abandonment for maintenance and uh, about the most recent military aggression of 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as, as we all know, the um, beginning of the 20th century resulted in many distractions due to fundamental political changes in the country and due to first world war. So you can see some historical photographs of the damages that occurred uh, in the city. Mm -hmm. Due to the um, First and Second World War, many industrial and residential buildings as well as transport system were destroyed. And here you can see the photographs, a historic photograph of the destroyed building just in front of the symbol of Odessa Opera and Ballet Theater at the Richelievska Street. The damage was huge and according to the Extraordinary Commission, uh, the um, damage to the Odessa housing stock amounted to 387 destroyed buildings and 902 damaged buildings. Terrible losses, they are related to the residential buildings, institutions, engineering, infrastructure, and that's all what characterizes the periods of the two wars, uh, of the Second World War. But the danger comes not only from outside, as we know. You know, we were speaking about Odessa tolerance, multiculturality, openness any, you know, the freedom of religion, but at a certain point, it did not count anymore. Many religious buildings were blown up, and not due to war, but due to religious, political, and social changes, decisions of someone who's in power. Another enemy of the heritage, as we know, is abandonment, decay, and poor maintenance. Abandonment, first of all, in this case, because we know that there were many German settlements around the city of Odessa, in the Odessa region, including the biggest one, which was called Valley of Biklav, Gross Libental. Um, it's 10 kilometers from Odessa. If you visit Odessa and if you travel around, you can see many uh, signs of this lost and depopulated settlements. Of course, there is destruction. Fortunately, there is also a reconstruction. And um, after the Second World War, we will show to you how the restoration works were managed. The restoration of the architectural monuments of Odessa was carried out by the same architects that were involved in normal urban and residential planning. 
Uh, this was possible due to the high level of preparation of experts before the war. In fact, this, there was a very large step of development and a lot, a lot of restorations. How were these restorations? So, for example, the former stock uh, exchange that, that had been badly damaged was um, restored, reconstructing the original appearance of the building like it was, changing somehow the inner courtyard. In many countries in that period, and maybe you have heard about, maybe you know, the most the main focus was set on conservation or like assembly of surviving fragments without reconstruction but just saving what is lost. In the uh, Soviet Union the emphasis was set on the revival of the lost architectural monuments in the same form which is a complete restoration. And um, many call this type of restoration like prototyping in kind, fake, violation of historical truths or replica also maybe mentioning Viola Le Duc. But in this case, in this specific case, after such a huge destruction, under this condition, there is simply no other way to, prever to preserve an integral chain in the continuous development of culture. So it's also not against Cesare Brandi. And um, you know what happened since February 2022. Here you see some images of destroyed buildings in Odessa and we have to think how we preserve the important monuments. As of October 17th, UNESCO has confirmed the destruction of war damage of 204 cultural heritage sites in, Ukra uh, sites in Ukraine. Now these are more and we already have seen that the war does not spare historical monuments as you can see on this image. We also know that at the end of August of this year, UNESCO has submitted the dossier of the candidacy of the city of Odessa to the inscription in the UNESCO World Heritage List. There are, thanks to all these international organizations and to the common effort, we hope to uh, save our heritage. Just to show to you again the symbol of Odessa connected to its multicultural spirit. The first major who is French, and this is how Odessa residents are, protected, are protecting his memory. Again, we said that the dangers come not only from outside, but also from inside. And the history is repeating. You see the um, square with the, um, Catherine the Grey, with the monument to Catherine the Grey that the students were just showing a short while ago, so now this monument might be removed from this spot, from this central square. Why? It means that the military aggression really results in the hate towards a figure which doesn't have to deal anything with the current situation. This is a general hate towards a Russian historical figure and it leads to the destruction of historical heritage. What we would like to say then, we would like to cite the words of Nikolai Rorich, who also has his house museum in Odessa. He is a painter who was nominated for Nobel Prize for Peace. And he said, we are tired of destruction and mutual misunderstanding. Only culture, only the generalizing concepts of beauty and knowledge can return us to the common human language. And let us add, to the common human language as it was witnessed originally by multicultural expressions in Odessa. Thank you. I would like to uh, say uh, thanks a lot for this possibility to take part in the festival, very important. We, collaboration, fruitful, we have fruitful collaboration many, many years, 22 years. Uh, we started at the beginning from San Gimignano, do Emilia. <laughs> and uh, of course,
because uh, this is a um, work of the visioner Melda Del Bianca, all family Del Bianca, a really multicultural expression, not only in, this, uh, in the world. And we are really happy, siamo felicissimi, perché in, in questa family possiamo possi possibilità lavorare. Grazie mille.